Greetings, greetings. Welcome, Market Rebels, to the sector situation. I'm Wayne, my partner Ryan's wrapping up our market outlook for the week. We've got another typo I just noticed in here, hmm, the splash screen. Anyway, this is a sector situation video for November 13th, 2022. It's a little bit after 1 p.m. here on the East Coast. And let's see if I can get this to advance since I've had fights with Windows 11. I've had fights with the Zoom. I've had fights with Thinkorswim. And this is going to be probably the shortest video, which is probably best. Here's our trusty disclaimer. And here's our intellectual property rights notice. But the reason for that is because I'm having Thinkorswim go in and out on me. They must be doing some kind of maintenance or something, but I don't think I can rely on it for very long. So I'm just going to make this quick, which is kind of unfortunate, but in the same by the same token, I should say it's it's better than me rambling on like I usually do. But anyway, here's our quick view, the 12 sectors we typically look at in the S&P uh, that we we uh, we add to. But I, if I, I feel like if I get to 15 on one screen, which I could go to, I feel like I'd uh, make them make each graph a little too small. But what we've been noting is that a lot of the sectors were flashing improvements that were pretty key things that you really wouldn't expect, like industrials, really getting strong <clears throat> um, basic materials. Financials have been strong. Uh, energy, it's own thing, as we always note, but it too, of course, has been strong. And then we also noted that uh, the, oh yeah, staples had been pretty strong, consumer staples. And we noted that maybe some of the other ones would start to catch up with some of those, but that overall, <clears throat> excuse me, coming into last week, our take was, let's see what happens uh, with the news, right? Like you don't want to sell the bulls short, don't want to disrespect what was going on in the market. Basically take it seriously that some of these sectors are really starting to go uh, and that breath is spreading out a little bit. And that just continued, right? The, uh, the election probably came out in terms of the uh, the final fallout differently than was expected, but it was unclear what was really going on after Tuesday evening. That didn't seem to really shake the market all that much. And then the CPI on, thurs on Thursday morning really, of course, set the tone for the tremendous rally that day that had a follow through day on Friday. And so I'm going to really just note that I think I would still, due to the seasonality that we've looked at, I don't know if I can bring that up on here. I had that up before. We had a lot of things saved um, and tabs that I covered at the top of macro measure. I had to wrap macro measure quickly because Thinkorswim was really starting to glitch out and I couldn't cover everything, but I'd rather at least get something covered. So I did, and, and that was it. But we talked about this before in these weekend videos and webinars and even cocktail hour, I think, but you know, this is the seasonal pattern and it's all years, midterm years. You can look at it with either in any or either case, all cases, pretty much rally into year's end uh, in this in this scenario. And we, we also said we need to respect that. Uh, it's not a lock, of course, but anything can happen, but th that's what typically plays out. And there's a lot of other things in here that I try to quickly cover. If you want to check that out in macro measure, but uh, now with last week, I think where we are is that things have gotten <clears throat> overdone. So you could see some of the RSI readings we round the round that off. XLF is at 69. Uh, the uh, XLB is at 70. The XLI is at 70, right? So a lot of these things have maybe gotten a little overdone. Something else, which we should look at, which is something we in fact do look at every week is SMH. SMH had a remarkable move last week. Uh, even on Friday was another incredibly powerful move after Thursday's incredibly powerful move, which followed really not such a wonderful situation there. Let me see on, on, on Wednesday, but you can see how they really, really jammed that up. And it now is at 70 <clears throat> already on the RSI. But what I tried to note on cocktail hour was that a lot of things are flashing like this right here. And I think I did show SMH, but this really 
this grid uh, helps me in getting a quick RSI view on many different time frames. So this, we start up here with a one minute and work our way all the way down to the monthly. So it's got it's got a lot on it, but what I like to call the heavy duty intradays are really more towards the middle and here, where you've got 30 minute chart that's at 75 on the RSI, 78 on the hourly, 81 on the two hour, uh, 76 on the half day, and then on the four hour, you're at nearly 78. So these are extreme and I treat that with respect. So what I'm looking at is a lot of stocks, a lot of sectors have ended up in this situation. <clears throat> and that means to me that if I were going to, assuming we have a news neutral weekend and we were going to come in and uh, we were going to try to continue, I would take trades in these overbought names, I would take them still, but I would keep them on a very short leash. If you don't see that enthusiasm continuing, right, I would trim, uh, let's say I have a base 10 for my trade, right, take trading 10 contracts, I'd trim a couple. If I don't see the momentum pick back up again, I'm gonna trim a few more. And if the momentum still doesn't pick up again, I'm gonna trim a few more and, or just exit take whatever little single I can get and move on. And if I see the momentum return again, maybe get back involved, but I'm going to not just sit there uh, when I'm this overbought, right? And, and let things get really bad in my face the other way, because I just know that things do not typically do this. A lot of these moves that we've seen have gotten quite vertical. What I mean by that is let's take one of these, um, maybe XLI or XLB would be good to look at on the larger chart for us. And I think you'll see that if I bring these up, XLB, for example, really vertical, right? If we, if we kind of adjust the scaling so we can see more of the price and less of some of the indicators and volume, this is a very vertical move. You know, it's, it's, it's not 85% or an 85 degree slope higher, but it's getting there. And that, top, that type of stuff doesn't normally sustain itself for too long. In fact, it started showing this reversal type candle right on Friday. And there's a lot of gaps and a lot of things too. And of course, Thinkorswim switched me over to percent. So this is my warning for the week. I would say, look, <clears throat> if they pull a lot of this stuff back, excuse me, in a nice corrective fashion, and we get a chance to go when the, when the, then, then we start seeing a turn back towards the bullish side, I'd be willing to go with it if it cools off and see what it what it can do. But remember, on the big picture view, which we have to take a look at, unfortunately, even though it's sector situation, we've got to look at the S&P in the form of the, or a proxy would for that being the SPY ETF. And this is where we are, right, in terms of the big picture on the daily. And this whole year is really uh, encapsulated here and I think the 200 there in purple and this resistance line up here, these are a couple of things I would expect to be a big deal, as would this, le this level up here, which is the 23.8 fib of the whole retracement from the top all the way down to, um, I'm sorry, from the bottom uh, of post COVID bottom to the, this high here. So. That's pretty much working your way back towards there. So somewhere where I've got the box, the transparent box, if you can see that, that's where I'm expecting this to try to work its way towards overall as a forecast. But I don't just because I think that doesn't mean right. I'm, I'm just still a bull no matter what. If this if this move here <clears throat> cannot continue and hesitates really close by, let's say, I would say, look, just as this was a little bit of a foreshadowing that we noted that we didn't make it all the way to the other end of the expanding channel where there's support. That could be a little sign that bulls are getting more aggressive. It could be the bears say, hey, I've seen enough of this, uh, enough of this, and they start stepping in sooner, and then we roll over sooner. <clears throat> so I'm, I'm flexible that way. But I, I still think like my default or most likely scenario is that we work higher. I just think it would be better and easier for us to trade it if we did get a pullback first, because as you can see, spiders um, have been up dramatically. They're not yet overbought on the daily, but they are overbought also on some of the heavier duty intraday timeframes like the 30, 
the one hour, the two hour, right? Half day is at 67, but you're at 69 if I round it off in the four hour, right? So the heavier duty intradays are already there. So you have to be careful going in. Again, if it's news neutral, we kind of open unchanged this, then I would be careful with a long trade for what I've just shown you. And that applies to mainly to the sectors that have jammed dramatically, right? The ones we've, we've looked at. Other sectors are laggards, right? They're, they're simply lagging behind right now. And if the market stays mildly positive, like the seasonality suggests that it will, and like all the inflows that are set to hit in terms of buybacks, CTAs, et cetera, you can look at the top of the macro measure video for just a little bit of that. Um, then this should, the, the, these maybe start to catch up more, right? You start, you start to see some chances to get involved. But again, a lot of it still doesn't make any sense to me other than it's the plumbing that we're talking about here. Like what's actually happening in the market to drive it. And there's Libra ETFs being bought for, for players that are behind on delivering return and they're trying to play catch up. A lot of these things just factor into it. And then it becomes, in a lot of folks' minds, irrational. And probably I would agree with those folks from a macro perspective, but knowing that there's all this stock to be bought and knowing that these yahoos love to use things like seasonality in their favor, knowing that they like to mark things up at the end of almost every year, knowing they don't want to look like they don't know how to manage people's money, knowing they want to try to eke out bonuses, knowing how these guys operate, knowing all these things, I can't rule out that they try to keep this thing going and maybe they succeed. Right. This is why I'm real. I try to be open minded. I know the tendencies, but those the, those internals, the, the you know, the plumbing, if you will, that's the type of stuff we refer to. When, when you hear us talk about that in prior videos or in future videos, you'll know this is what we're talking about when it comes to the internals. There could also be I mean, um, to the plumbing, there could also be things like gamma. Right. That would in, that would affect things where. People need to scramble and cover if there's a lot of short calls out there and then the market continues to go. So there's a lot of stuff that's out there that can, that can drive things. On the short run, let's just look at it objectively and say, look, bulls, we were, we were cautious. We wanted to give the bulls the benefit of the doubt. It's probably the prudent move. And it turned out in the end, probably was the prudent move. And now we're looking at a lot of sectors that have gone a little too far and we're looking at some as laggards. And what I would then do is come back to here. Excuse me. I think my wife is kind enough to give me her cold last night. SMH. I tried to try to keep her on the other side of the couch, but she had to watch that movie right next to me. I'm afraid I'm, afraid I'm coming down with something now. Anyway, um, we've got this situation in the SMH that's similar to the SPY in terms of resistance line right there, which I'll make blue, and then the purple 200, right? But SMH coming back is a big deal. We do look at that each week. You can already see though, we're at 70 on the RSI. So the issue is this could, this could go either way. I know that's a big revelation, but I believe there's some earnings due out on some of the big names in here. So if you're looking at this sector, definitely check those out because they could really affect um, how that, that, all those uh, that that ETF performs this week. So just keep that in mind. Another thing we'll take a look at is XHB, because again, mortgage applications are getting annihilated. People are walking away from houses. The price of homes is exorbitant. Um, the interest rates make it a no go in terms of affordability. And yet, look at this, right? Look at look at the percent rally here. Call it fifty four. Call it nearly sixty three. Right, so you're looking at um, a nine a nine uh, point move, not quite twenty percent, but just in a week and a half they've moved this thing up, you know, fifteen percent, something like that. What maybe maybe more? Um, really, really powerful. Excuse me, XAU. Let's take a look at this. Right, we've said that we, well, I said that we really want. I wanted to see this come down. I was getting worried about it that it could start to be. It's starting to look a little bit more complexion wise, technically that it was looking a little bit better. And unfortunately that, that that's paid off for bulls. Um, that complexion change, at least it started to produce something here, which is, was a nice, probably a potentially nice trade had some names in there. 
uh, four in UOA Pro. We had uh, Newman spin in there. I'm pretty sure we had Newman. We had KGC in there. Uh, we had um, Gold, I believe, in there uh, as well. And I hope folks did well on those, but they participated in that. So again, I think it's another example of when you, it's good to look at the, how the whole group looks. And then when that UOA comes in, if the group's acting well and you see fresh UOA, you look at the technicals for the individual name, the specific name. It, if it all kind of fits together nicely, like a Russian nesting doll, you're probably onto something as long as it hasn't ran too far before you could become involved. We'll take a look at copper. Uh, let's see <clears throat> if they let me get copper. This is causing a problem. We did note this a few weeks back that we even had a, a, a triangle drawn there. And, you know, this is what everyone calls this Dr. Copper, right? Because of how important it is and so many things. And when there's picking up from demand, but it was doing nothing for so long and then sort of went into that triangulation phase. And now it's really popped. And again, I don't know if this is wishful thinking or it's legit coppers picking up because we're at the start of a new cycle. We're at the start, uh, we're at the end of a bear market that was really quick and brief. And we're at the start of a bull market. That's the, that's not me talking. That's a lot of folks out there talking um, on CNBC, on the, in the Twitter sphere, the whole thing, right? So just be cognizant of that. I'm not making that argument, but some are, and they, they may be right. I still feel as though there's a lot of fallout coming, but I don't want to be on the wrong side of the momentum. And the momentum is in the hands of the bulls right now. It's can they sustain it after the dramatic run we've had? Like I said, I think it would only be natural and better for bulls, frankly, if they pull things back, get them to cool off a little bit, and then try again, see if the real buying shows up and continues to buy. And that would be, of course, really good. Or even uh, well, legitimate buying in terms of it's really happening, but buying really just to save their own hides for the year. Here's the oil future. Uh, and this is its own thing. I, I say that every time. We've been long energy. We've been trying to trade those from mainly from the bear, I'm sorry, from the bull side with a few bear ideas mixed in here and there for little pullbacks, but that's been an XLE and components, right? That's where we've been, of course, trading. We don't, we trade the oil futures, but I'm looking at this and waiting for this thing to potentially break out. And it's struggling again at about where it struggled before. And so I've got some ideas in UOA Pro that are, I think, raring to go uh, for folks. I, and, you know, I'm a little worried that we're, we're not breaking out. So that's kind of a strange thing in the sense that, yes, I will agree that energy's up here um, and that's good. And it's been performing well. For most of the year, it's performed pretty well, but it's hesitating here. And usually that's, you know, that, that's not normally good. Usually when something's really strong, they won't even let you buy it near when, when it starts breaking out. They'll make it, for example, like you, you kind of break out from this high here and they just keep buying it day after, mostly day after day. And that just didn't happen here. It's not happening here. And that's why I always, this is by the way, for all of you that wonder, why does Wayne put those little reminders of watch for false breakout? It's for this. This is exactly why I do it because the first time you get there and possibly try to go through, these guys are, the, are experts at performing the old reversal and shakeout, or that's why. So it's a great example of why I bother to even type that. It's just that it's not, it's quite common, right, to see that. And I don't want to see people get caught off guard that are newer to this game. Uh, let's take a look at lumber. If they let us, I've been having so many problems on thinkorswim today. I'm really reluctant. I, I really want to wrap this up quickly. Uh, here's lumber that's making a new high, right? New recent high as far as the, oh, that's the old future though. Sorry. Let's, what do we have to go? I can't remember what we have to go to for that LB. Let's make sure we have the right future before I start yapping about it. Let's try to get um january we'll do it for now we'll try to just take what we can get if it lets me that makes more sense to me i was going to say like it wasn't doing that great how did it do that <laughs> it kind of called me off guard <clears throat> but i guess you could say rounding up a little but this is this to me thanks for switching to percent by the way think or swim 
this to me is um, more indicative of what's going on. Like when I look at that chart and I look at housing, I look because of what happened with rates and the house price appreciation, this makes sense to me, at least. It's one of the things that makes sense to me right now, but right, that's doing virtually nothing. So nothing special there. Uh, you know, we'll keep an eye on it. We'll try to take a look at it. We, talk, we took a look at copper, we took a look at oil. Um, let me try to think if there's anything else I could take a look at. Um, I did look at XHB, I believe, the home builders that had, yeah, they had already done something again. So this is probably a good thing to mention, just right, even a, s a sector where you'd say, well, what, what's going on here, right? Why, right? It's not like rates are gonna start turning around coming down anytime soon. Why would they start buying stocks as if they're going out of style in home builders? That's the way, that's the way they roll, right? That's just the way they roll. So I, I'm not buying it. I don't think it's all over. Um, but again, I wouldn't fight against the momentum either at the same time. So it's kind of hard to be long-term and short-term at the same time. But I like to just, I don't like to force a long situation until the short-term uh, is in, in agreement with it. You know, and right now I wouldn't be fighting against anything until I see a momentum shift back towards the bear side that looks like it's got staying power, that it'll just be more than a day or two. But um, there's a great example of why we always talk about trading what you see and not what you think, because why should home builders be up like the way that they, the way they just were, which was dramatic. Uh, but that is the coverage on the sectors. Uh, let's take a look. Let's take a look at the dollar. We'll take a look at that. Now this, we talked about it kind of being overbought in many ways. And I think we were talking about it sliding further than if it fell below there, which it did on that support line, it would be bigger trouble than it was. And so as I'm sure a lot of you've already guessed, right? This is also similar to what happened in rates where uh, the dollar got shelled, uh, the you know, stocks going up, dollar gets shelled, 10 year yield gets hit. Uh, uh oh, I think this the think or swim gremlins could be back on me. Not good. Um, we'll see if it shows anything here. All right, yeah, they're it's starting up again. This has happened to me all day. It's been another hellish day, tech wise, for different reasons. Boy, oh boy. Well, I'm going to let that go for now. Uh, again, I'm sorry. I, I have to wrap on this now because I see all of my think or swim uh, layouts are getting frozen off screen uh, from here. So that's going to make it impossible for me to really say much. But the wrap would be we end of the week overbought. If things are news neutral, keep your long side trades in sectors and names that have really ran on a very short leash. Uh, if they do pull back and they put a nice higher low in, you start to see the momentum shift. Still be careful, but you know a little bit longer leash, but still be careful. I think the bulls are in control for right now until until further notice, until proven otherwise. And then if they fail to take out the highs that we saw at the end of last week, uh, or it just really gets a short circuited bull uh, bull attempt, right? Then you might then you might start leaning in more towards, I don't think the spare market's completely over. Uh, and maybe you roll over hard from there. We'll see. That would go in the face of seasonality. It would go in the face of, well, all the midterm years, depend, not, regardless of who, who, who was in, who wasn't. Um, it would go in the face of uh, the buybacks that are coming in, the uh, CTAs that are on the verge of triggering more, going from short covering to going long. Um, and there's also uh, fresh money apparently supposedly coming in to support this. And then people are chasing performance using Libra ETFs, which are pulling a lot of other things up. So uh, the failure here would go against all that, but it would, it would be more in line with the trend of the, of the year and the trend of the fact that we're still in a bear market, I think, until we start taking out highs. And after we take in, out those, some kind of structural high that's significant, then we, and getting back above the 200 day and so on and so forth, then we have to see a pullback, which puts in a higher low that holds. And then of course, it, we start to exceed the high that we made prior to that low. And then we're off and running in what could be a, a really uh, another bull, bullish cycle.
But for now, I've got to end it on that. I do apologize. This is obviously beyond my control. Super frustrating uh, that Thinkorswim is going through this, I don't know, maintenance, whatever's happening there. Ryan struggling with it too. Uh, we spoke about it. Really a frustrating situation. And uh, let's just hope it doesn't spill over into this week's trading with so, much, so many of us using the platform. Take care, everyone. Sorry again.